Hey everyone, welcome to iTower. Today, we're going to build our very own event emitter in JavaScript. This is a super useful concept for managing events in your applications, whether it's handling clicks, form submissions, or custom events. It's something you'll encounter in interviews and real-world projects. So let's dive in and see how it works. Before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel. Your support means a lot and helps me bring more valuable content to you. All right, let's jump into the code. We'll start by creating a class called event emitter. This class will hold our events and listeners. We want to create a way to register listeners and emit events, so we'll need a place to store all our events. For this, we'll use an object called events. Each event will have its own list of listeners, and this object will keep track of them. So in the constructor, we initialize this events as an empty object. This object will store each event as a key, and the corresponding value will be an array of listeners. It's important that each event has its own list of listeners, so we can easily manage multiple listeners for the same event. Now we need to create a method that allows us to register listeners for events. We'll call this method on. This method will take two parameters, the event name and the listener function. First, we'll check if the event already exists in this event. If it doesn't, we'll create a new array for that event. Then, we'll add the listener to the event's array. We check if the event already exists. If it doesn't exist, we initialize an empty array for that event. Then, we use push method to add the listener function to the event's array. This means that whenever the event is triggered, we can execute all the functions that have been added to the event. We should also add functionality to remove listeners. We'll create a method called auth, which will allow us to unregister a listener from an event. The method will find the event in this event and filter out the listener that we want to remove. We first check if the event exists in this event. If it does, we use filter to create a new array that excludes the listener we want to remove. This way, the listener will no longer be part of the event's listener list and it won't be called when the event is emitted again. Next, we need to create the functionality that triggers the event and calls all the listeners. We'll create a method called emit. This method will accept the event name and any arguments that need to be passed to the listeners. Inside this method, we'll check if the event exists in this event. If it does, we'll loop through all the listeners for that event and call them one by one. We'll also pass any arguments that were given to emit into the listener functions. First, we check if the event exists. If it does, we loop through all the listeners using for each. The listener part is crucial because we use the spread operator to pass all the arguments from emit into each listener. This way, listeners can receive the data they need when the event is triggered. To make things even more interesting, we'll add a method called once. This method will allow us to register a listener that only fires once and then automatically removes itself. We do this by creating a wrapper function that calls the listener and then removes it from the event. We define a wrapper function that will be called when the event is emitted. Inside the wrapper, we first remove it from the event's listener list using this auth. After that, we call the original listener with the provided arguments. Finally, we register the wrapper function as the listener for the event, so it will execute once and then be removed. Now, let's test everything to make sure it works as expected. First, we create an instance of the event emitter class. This instance will allow us to interact with our event system by registering events and emitting them. Next, we define a simple listener function that will log a message to the console whenever it's triggered. This function will receive data as a parameter and print it out. In this case, the response handler function simply logs the data it receives, so it's easy to check if the event is emitted correctly. We then register this listener for the data event using the on method. This means every time the data event is emitted, the response handler function will be called and will log the provided data. At this point, whenever the data event is triggered, our listener will run and it will log the message we expect. Now, we'll emit the data event with the message hello world. When this happens, the response handler function should be called and the message should be logged to the console. Next, let's test the removal of listeners using the auth method. We call off to remove the response handler function from the data event. This means that after calling, the listener will no longer respond to the data event. Now, when we emit the data event again, the listener should not be called because we've removed it. Since the listener has been removed, nothing will be logged this time, confirming that our off method works as intended. Finally, let's test the once method. The once method allows us to add a listener that will only fire once. 
After it's triggered the first time, it's automatically removed. We use this method to register a listener for the data event that should only run once. Let's emit the data event twice. We want to see how the listener behaves when it's supposed to fire only once. But nothing will be logged for the second call because the listener was removed after the first execution. This proves that the once method works correctly and the listener only fires the first time the event is emitted. And that's how we build an event emitter from scratch in JavaScript. We've created a flexible event system where we can register listeners, emit events, remove listeners, and even handle one-time listeners. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps me create more content to help you become a better developer. See you in the next video.